Hi there parents, this is Rebecca with homeschool.com. I know how busy you are, so I thought we would try an experiment today. I'm going to read a story to your kids. I loved reading to my own children. Um, they're in college now and they don't let me read to them anymore. I don't know why. But let me read to your kids so that you can grab a coffee or take a break or put the kids on your lap and enjoy the book together. I have this wonderful series of books. You've probably seen it, um, the Illustrated Children's Classics, and they're so wonderful. So I thought today we could start out with uh, the Swiss Family Robinson. Um, it's one of the most popular of the classic children's books, and it's written in a really simple style. So I think that your children will enjoy it. So if you want to put the you know, use this recording, maybe you want to sleep in on a Friday morning or maybe your voice is tired and you need me to tuck your kids in. I would love that. Wish I was there in person to be able to tuck them in. Um, so and maybe give the kids something to color with so that they can enjoy. I thought we could do this for about 15 minutes live. So if you happen to come on live right now while I'm reading, um, please um, say something in the comment line so that I know that you're there and I can say hello. And or if you want, um, write down um, the name of your child or your children and what ages they are. And then I'll be able to pick some age appropriate books for us. Okay, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna play with 15 minutes. Parents, this is your time to relax and my time to play with your kids. Okay, the, this is The Swiss Family Robinson by Johann Viss. I believe it's pronounced Viss. About the author. Johann Rudolf Viss was born in Bern, Switzerland on March 13th, 1781. So kids, do you know where Switzerland is? Um, ask someone to point it out to you on a map. It's a really, really beautiful country in Europe. Uh, he was the son of a pastor who entertained young Johann and his brothers at bedtime with adventure tales of a shipwrecked preacher and his family. Johann had a fine education at several German universities, and in 1806 he became a professor at the University of Bern, Bern and also its head librarian. But Professor Wyss never lost his love of literature. This led to his collecting and editing Swiss folk stories and to his writing of the Swiss National Anthem. I didn't know that. I didn't know that the author of Swiss Family Robinson also wrote their national anthem. That's so cool. But it wasn't until 1813 that Johann Viss gained worldwide fame when he wrote, edited, and published his father's bedtime stories under the title of, get this, the original title was so long, the Shipwrecked Preacher and His Family, colon, an instructional book for children and their friends in city or country, which was mercifully <laughs> later shortened to be the now famous Swiss Family Robinson. Immediately after its publication, the Swiss Family Robinson was translated into many languages, including English. Over the years, it has become one of the most popular books for generations of European and American children. And fortunately, the author was able to enjoy that popularity before he um, passed away in 1830. All right, let's start. Chapter one, Shipwrecked. Many years ago, my family left Switzerland and boarded a ship bound for the sparkling blue waters of the Pacific Ocean. Our destination was an island near New Guinea where we were to establish a colony. Along the way, we ran into a violent storm. For six days, the wind howled and tore at the sails, while the waves pounded against our little wooden ship, tossing it high in the air. On the seventh day, the masts ripped apart and fell into the sea. Several leaks appeared, and the ship began to fill with water. Realizing that the storm had driven us far off course, the frightened sailors fell to their knees in prayer. You mustn't be afraid, I said to my four sons, Fritz, 15, Jack, 13, Ernst, 11, and Francis, 8, who clung to me trembling. God will save us, for nothing is impossible to him. My wife, Elizabeth, wiped away her tears and reassured our sons that we would survive this crisis. I admired her courage, but my heart was heavy as I led my family in prayer. 
Land ahoy! Land ahoy! cried a sailor. At that same moment, the ship crashed into a large rock, sending everyone on board reeling in all directions. Then we heard a loud crack as if the whole ship was falling apart. Suddenly the sea came rushing in. All is lost, shouted the captain in his booming voice. Into the boats, men. As the terrified sailors rushed by us, Elizabeth and the children looked at me in wide-eyed amazement. Stay calm, I said. There is no reason to panic. First of all, the water hasn't reached us yet. And secondly, we are near land. Wait here in the hold while I go see what is the best thing to do. On deck, one wave after another knocked me down. When I finally struggled to my feet, I was greeted by a scene of utter disaster. The ship was completely shattered and there was a large gaping hole in one side where the water was rushing in. The crew had just cut loose the ropes of the boats and were pushing off into the churning sea. Come back, I shouted but the angry ocean drowned out my cries. Soon the boats disappeared from sight. My only consolation was that since the ship's stern was lodged between two rocks, we were safe for the time being. Peering through the rain, I could make out the dim outline of land in the distance. Oh, we have someone on. Carrie, hello Carrie. Thank you for joining me for story time. All right, back to the excitement. With luck and the change of tide, we should be able to reach ashore sometime tomorrow, I told my solemn sons when I went below. Come, let's eat some dinner. They're eating dinner when the ship's going down, but there, <laughs> that's another story. Elizabeth added bravely, sensing my anxiety. We have a long night ahead of us. Fritz, my eldest son, who realized the danger we were in, sat up with us long after his brothers fell asleep. I've been thinking, he said, if only we had some life jackets, we could swim to shore. Great idea, Fritz, I answered. Let's see what we can find to make them with. In the kitchen, we uncovered some small wooden butter tubs. We tied these together two by two using towels. When we were finished, we had made six life jackets. Delighted with his accomplishment, Fritz curled up near his brothers and fell into a sound sleep. Elizabeth and I, fearing that each strange sound might spell disaster, kept a prayerful watch throughout the long night. The first rays of morning light awakened the boys, and they rushed up on deck to see a bright sun shining over the Pacific. As we saw that the sea was calm at last, our spirits began to soar. Let's put on our new life jackets and swim to shore, Fritz cried. Maybe you can swim, Fritz, Jack answered cautiously, still shaken by the desertion of the crew. But the rest of us can't. We'd soon be drowned. Wouldn't it be better to make a float of rafts and get to land that way? Good thinking, Jack, I said, slapping him on the back. Get busy, everyone. See what you can find. When Jack opened the doors of the captain's quarters, two huge dogs, Turk and Flora, came leaping out. They licked Jack's face and hands hungrily. Jack jumped up on the back of one and holding tightly to his ears, rowed him on deck. Do you have a dog or someone you know have a dog? I have a dog named Molly and I was hoping that she would sit on my lap, but she kept wiggling off. So I finally kicked her out of the room. Next time though. Better be careful, I warned. A hungry dog can be dangerous. You'll be glad enough to have these dogs when we get to land, Jack replied. They'll be great help hunting and shooting. Look what I found, called a voice from below. Rushing down, we saw four empty casks, that's like giant barrels, floating about in the water. We immediately fished them out and sawed them in half, making eight tubs, each big enough to hold one person. I then savaged several long planks from the hold and placed the eight tubs upon one, nailing each tub securely to the plank. Then the boys and I nailed two planks on each side of the tubs, creating a narrow but sturdy boat. After cutting other planks into paddles, we lowered the boat into the water. We were ready to set sail. Wait, cried my wife, scurrying up from another section of the hold. You won't believe what I've discovered. A cow, a mule, two goats, six sheep, and a pig. She caught her breath, then went on, plus hens, roosters, pigeons, geese, and ducks. What a wonderful find, I exclaimed, exclaimed. 
but we can take only the roosters and hens with us on this trip. I then tucked them in the tub that already held the gunpowder, threw the pigeons up in the air, and put the other fowl in the water. The provisions filled another tub, leaving each member of the family with his own individual tub to ride in. I shall never muster enough courage to get into one of these, said Elizabeth nervously. Come now, dear wife, I think your tub is a better sailing ship than the wreck we're leaving behind. I took her by the arm and gently guided her into the little round vessel. We're off, I yelled as we pushed away from our wrecked ship. Turk and Flora swam after us, along with all the cackling geese and ducks. The sea was calm and the sky was bright blue with not a cloud in sight. Paddling along, we passed chests and casks from the, from the shipwreck and managed to seize two of them and pull them aboard. As we approached land, we saw that the coastline was rocky and barren on one side and green and lush on the other. Suddenly, we hit a swift current, which swept us toward the rocky coast and into a little opening between the rocks. That opening was the mouth of a small creek. Standing on the banks of the creek as it widened into a river, calmly watching our arrival was a family of penguins, while pink flamingos soared over our heads, flapping their wings to wish us a warm welcome. We're safe, cried the boys, jumping out as we touched land. Elizabeth and I gathered our family around us and thanked God for a peaceful landing. Our hearts were full of joy. After unloading the boat, we pitched a tent near a brook and made beds of dried grass. Elizabeth helped us construct a crude kitchen and she began preparations for dinner. While I was dragging the two casks, I can't say that word, C-A-S-K-S, -S. I'm not sure to switch it to barrels. While I was dragging the two barrels up from the shore, the boys sent us out and they set out to explore the area. Jack found a giant lobster and Ernst discovered an oyster bed. Fritz, returning from the other side of the creek, brought back an agouti, which is a native pig. He told of beautiful woods and fields with soft green grass for our animals to eat. Tomorrow we'll return to the wreck and bring all the animals here, I assured him. Did you see any trace of the crew? But neither Fritz nor the others had seen even a glimpse of the sailors. After dinner, as the sun sank in the west, we retired to our tent. We had been through a frightful ordeal, but we were grateful to be alive and to be together. And so it was that my family, shipwrecked at sea, spent their first night on a desert island somewhere in the South Pacific. Chapter 2. How much time do we have? Okay, I think we have a few more minutes to start. Oh, hello, Christine. Thank you for joining me. Do you have your kids watching? Send me a message if you can. Write something in the comment field so I know. Are they coloring? Are they sitting on your lap? Um, are they watching it while you get a chance to, you know, go take a break? That's what I'm really hoping for. I know what a big job it is when you're homeschooling. I loved it so much, but it is a big job. So I'm just hoping that maybe this will be a, a nice way that I can give you a break. All right, let's start a little bit of chapter two. Return to the wreck. The next day, we were awakened at dawn by the crowing of the roosters just outside our tent. Over a breakfast of lobster meat and biscuits, Elizabeth and I made our plans for our first full day on the island. Don't you think you should investigate the land on the other side of the river and see if it's as lush and green as Fritz says it is? She asked. You're right, I told her. We definitely should compare the two areas before deciding where we build our home. Keep your eyes open for any sign of the crew, Elizabeth called as Fritz and I started on our journey. With this in mind, we chose a path near the shore so that we would be in a position to spot the sailors quickly. But alas, there was no one in sight. All we could see was the wreck bobbing up and down in the azure blue sea. We had just crossed a shallow part of the river when Turk came bounding up and taking the lead, guiding us through the tall grass and tangled vegetation to the top of a hill. The world we discovered that day was truly a tropical paradise. We passed through forests of towering trees of all types, fields of sugarcane and rolling hills of grass, leafy green plants and fragrant flowers. Brightly colored birds darted across our path, 
and monkeys chatted in the trees as they watched our every move. At noontime, we entered a forest of palm trees. The monkeys, frightened by Turks barking, scurried to the treetops. From there, they watched as we ate our lunch of leftover lobster and biscuits, making hostile noises and grinding their teeth all the while. Suddenly, Fritz leapt to his feet. Father, I have an idea, he cried. I'm going to put these monkeys to work. With that, he began throwing stones at the treetops. This infuriated the monkeys, and they began tearing off all the coconuts they could reach and hurling them down at us. Laughing loudly at the success of his scheme, Fritz opened up some of the coconuts with his hatchet. He passed one to me, and we thirstily drank the milk, which we both agreed was not all that tasty. <laughs> Guess they don't like coconut milk. In late afternoon, we headed for home, weighted down by a sack of Fritz's coconuts, a large bundle of sugar cane, and a collection of plates, bowls, and spoons that we had fashioned from gourds. Gourds are kind of like um, small dry pumpkins. Along the way, we had still another tussle with a troop of monkeys, this time on the ground. Turk, barking loudly, charged into the midst and brutally attacked a female monkey who was cradling a baby in her arms. No, Turk, Fritz shouted, rushing to the rescue. But it was too late. Turk not only killed the monkey, but he completely devoured her as well. Ugh. At first, her little orphan baby hid in the grass, but then he scampered out and climbed up on Fritz's shoulders. Father, father, can't I take him home with me? Fritz begged. I will feed him my share of the coconut milk and take good care of him. All right, bring him along, I replied. I suppose it's the least we can do. No bigger than a kitten, the little monkey rode gleefully home on Fritz's shoulders. They were greeted with shouts of welcome by the other boys, and the monkey soon became a real family favorite. All right, I think that that is our 15 minutes for today. So what do you think is going to happen next? I'll save our spots and I might even take a break and come back and read some more so that you have the recording so that you can use it anytime you want. Maybe you want to sleep in, maybe you want to take a little break, um, maybe you just want to enjoy this wonderful book. It's a really great movie too and I noticed that about every two years there's another version of Swiss Family Robinson that's being put on. Okay, so Christine and Carrie, Thank you so much. Oh, hang on. I'm going to bring you closer. Hopefully you're not getting a, just a really close up of my nostrils. It says they are watching. They are actually coloring. Ooh. So what do you think, guys? Send me, let's do this. Send me a heart if you want me to keep reading and to read some more. Or send me a thumbs up if you think that the kids are done for today. All right, so I'm going to pause here. Hearts going across the string. Spring means you want me to keep reading, maybe finish chapter two, or a thumb up means that the maybe the kids are tired and we should stop for right now. Okay, tell me what to do. I love reading, I can read, read forever. Okay, I think that, that was a thumb up. All right, so we're done for now. And I might take a brief break and then come back and read some more. So you'll note, I'll put that it's story time. I'll put that it's Swiss Family Robinson. The next one I'll mark as part two. So thank you so much for joining me. I wish I could see a picture of you and do a split screen. So um, hi kids, I hope you're enjoying the book. This is Rebecca with homeschool.com sending you lots of love and lots of break time for you. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.